just to get up in there. And you, after you don't plow the field, and the field that the earth smells so good from uh, planting to harvesting, it's such a good feeling. At 71, things are good for Montgomery County farmer Charles Lucas. He owns prime property in the Jackson Springs community. He wanted to buy the whole place for about a million dollars. And now uh, this is what I'm growing. He has a diverse crop. This is the bok joy. And he's about to open a market where fellow farmers can sell their goods. It's going to be something that's going to uplift this community in a great way. You could say Lucas is living his best farm life. <laughs> but he's the first to admit it took time to get to this point. I bought this farm in 1975 and man, it was kind of rough. Couldn't get no money. <laughs> People just wouldn't let me have no, wouldn't get, wouldn't get you no loan. So I got frustrated. So frustrated that Lucas quit. So when I, so I sold all my farm equipment and uh, started driving trucks. While he held on to that career for decades, his passion for farming never faded. And in 2008, a workshop brought him back to his land. I started not to go. And so I went down there, and he was talking about growing sustainable crops. I had this land, I had the two greenhouses out there. I already had them, but, you know, and I bought this farm to farm it. So I went to that workshop in, in Rockingham with A&T, so I bought my, put my land back in production. From that point on, so I've been rolling it ever since. It's better late than never. This time around, Lucas had the support of his farming community. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah. North Carolina A&T State sent international students to help him get things going. From Togo, Africa, uh, Tanzania, uh, Zaire, and I had some come from uh, Cambodia, Vietnam, the Philippines, and some from South America. And, uh, Jamaica, about 12 or 13 of them came and helped me put the greenhouse together. Gotta go in there like that. It grew into a learning experience yeah. for both sides. They bought a lot of equipment. They bought drip tape and showed me how to do drip irrigation. You see it dripping. And then, you know, I didn't use my land for the research, but then I was showing them how to uh, plant different crops like peas and okra and tomatoes. That cuts that water on, and it sends that water all the way out to the other part of the farm. a and also helped Lucas with his water supply. When I first started farming, we didn't have no good water sources. <laughs> NCA and t they came down and devised a plan with catching water off my house and off my barn. So I got a rain, rain catcher, a rain harvester. The barn, I can capture 9,000 gallons off it, and I can get another uh, 3,000 off the house. And then I uh, got that well, uh, NRCS, ag wrap them, they, they had a little grant there, they put the well in, so I got the well to support the tank. So soil and water, I had an ag wrap grant, and uh, we got the uh, drip irrigation, and that's how we got started. Lucas knows how partnerships and community have helped him. He plans to pay it forward with his market. And I'm gonna let it open up a corporate extension, Farm Bureau, whoever wanna come and use this facility. It's for everybody, really. And people can come out and can sell vegetables. Having little classes of with healthy eating and have some schools when I get my thing straight where kids can come out. But it's gonna be a great uh, classroom type thing. Lucas is proud of the future and even the past. When I was 19 years old, and you see I still got the same smile. Because he never gave up his dream or his land. It hadn't been easy, you know, but hey, but I'm not mad with nobody. I ain't bitter, but I kept my land. And I'd like this land to remain uh, farmland.